Greetings two stroke fans. This in this video were uh, probably a number of videos where it's going to cover the uh, the topic the science behind two stroke expansion chambers, two stroke exhaust expansion chambers and the wonder of them. First of all, I'm going to give you the most basic description I can of a single cycle of the expansion chamber in operation. And then we're going to get into the intricacies of each aspect along the way in uh, ensuing videos. But for now, we'll just do the complete explanation. What I've got here is represents a two-stroke cylinder. Um, at the moment, that um, combustion has occurred, and this represents exhaust gases, and the piston is now moving downwards. The exhaust port has just opened. The transfer ports are not open yet. So... This represents what we would have if we opened a bottle of champagne, for example. Um, we would have a bursting out of pressure, and this is what's called the blowdown point, the blowdown phase, and pressure bursts out out of that very small gap in there once the piston's not the ring, the piston top itself. I'll get into that later. Um, now there's a very small gap and very high pressure here, very low pressure here. So the initial air molecules that move past there will move past through that gap extremely rapidly. Now, uh, they will move through there rapidly enough to create a sound wave, a sonic wave of energy. Sound energy is not actually gas molecules. Sound energy is just energy that causes de de a depression on the local air molecules, like the... Uh, Wave energy moves through an ocean. The entire ocean doesn't move, but where the energy of wave moves through the ocean, you can see the peak of the disturbance, the local disturbance that the energy is causing as the wave moves along. So we get a sonic wave, and a sonic wave moves, it's being sonic, at the speed of sound. But the speed of sound inside the pipe is far quicker than the speed of sound outside the pipe because of far higher temperatures. And the higher the temperature goes, the faster the speed of sound is, and we refer to that as the sonic velocity. So the sonic velocity changes with temperature. A higher sonic velocity means that any sound in there will move at that speed. So a sonic wave moves out ahead of the gas at the speed of sound. The gas initially moves very rapidly, but as the piston opens and the pressure bleeds down, obviously the gas will move at a lower speed um, for the remainder of the gas. Um, so our gas, the speed that our gas moves is totally proportion is totally dictated by the pressure of where it was and the lower pressure of where it's going to. Um, so the lower the pressure differential is, the lower the airspeed will move. But our sound pulse is moving at sonic velocity constantly. It continues to move down the pipe, the sound wave. Okay, the piston continues to move downwards. We get to our next phase. That is that that first wave comes down to our diffuser cone, our sonic wave. And when our sonic wave hits a diffuser cone, a diverging angle going outwards, we get a reflection of the positive sonic wave, a second sonic wave that moves and it's reflected in the opposite direction. And it is also inverted, meaning that it doesn't cause a peak in the local air molecules, it causes a trough. A low pressure. So what happens when this hits the diffuser cone, this low pressure reflection, the second sonic wave travels back up the diffuser through the gases. It doesn't care about the gases at all. It's a sound, okay? So like like energy moves through the ocean. It comes back into the in, into the combustion chamber to aid scavenging. Now at this stage the transfer is opened, inlet is pouring in, okay? Um, there's no point in bringing this, uh, this back into here during the blowdown phase because uh, we'll be hard pressed to create a, a negative pressure inside there to begin with. Um, and due to the fact that the inlet gases coming in are under pressure from the primary compression of the two stroke from the piston pushing down, pushing the gases up, um, that any negative, um, negative wave that comes back through there will aid to bring more charge in. Now, Yes, we get more exhaust out, but the inlet fuel and air causes, you know, creates power. So that's what we're interested in getting in there. Okay, so we've got a positive wave, 
our negative wave being reflected up to help scavenging. Our positive wave continues on down the exhaust pipe as our gas slug is discharging and the fresh intake coming in and we get to the next phase which is our positive wave hits the baffle cone at the end and then is reflected backwards but it's not inverted okay it's not coming out like the diffuser cone where we had an inverted wave reflected backwards from it and the positive wave continuing on um, the negative wave has gone back up in here in the combustion chamber to do the scavenging help aid with the scavenging that's done so now we've got the positive wave reflected off the baffle cone it travels back pistons at the bottom inlet uh, transfer and uh, exhaust are open that's going on there our loop scavenging you see a bit of a rough one there and what happens just before the piston closes and the transfer is closing um, what we get in here is we've got uh, air and fuel which has been forced at speed up here and as you know um, anything including gas once it's moving at speed it wants to keep moving at speed and if it stopped it's hard to get it moving at speed again so the timing of this is very critical to make sure that you know we, we're, we're helping gases that are already moving to keep moving a bit more so the positive wave comes back and we get a leakage of intake out into the exhaust and that positive wave the original positive wave reflected back port plugs and helps push some of that intake back into the into the chamber now there's no point in this pushing it back if the transfer is still open because we're then you know we're just pushing pushing it back out of there so we've got to wait till the transfer closes so the timing is very important to push this positive energy there so that we get that wave peak of uh, against the against the air molecules or the pressure pushing backwards just as the piston closes and then we are back to the beginning okay piston goes to the top under compression fires combustion occurs gas pressure rises piston goes down and we complete our cycle now the gas slug that's gone out all the way okay that will continue to go out and diffuse and as we know when gas flows through a uh, like a reverse venturi uh, the speed of the gas will slow down also um, now i referred to the uh, the sonic velocity okay the sonic velocity being being dependent on temperature um, so the temperature of the pipe will vary over the pipe this will be the hottest part this will be not as hot this will be the coolest part and this will be hotter again because we've got a converging um, taper there where the gas is being forced back into pressure into the outlet pipe okay so that the sonic velocity or the local speed of sound will change as it moves through the pipe okay so it's important to keep the pipe uniformly as you know constant in temperature as we can again i'll get into that uh i'll get into more but lightly refers to the timing known as tuned length so as you can see the reflection of the first negative wave that comes back up the relationship of distance from the piston port window to where the diffuser cone is to reflect that back so that that negative inverted wave comes back at the right time is fairly critical so that's a tuned length now as rpm increases and 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 decreases the sonic velocity doesn't change so there will be points in operation where that happens too early and where it happens too late likewise the tune length timing of this wave the positive wave reflected from the baffle cone back up here is as equally important there's certain rpms where it'll be too late certain rpms it'll be too early um, but at a at our peak desired rpm of power um, that will arrive just at the right time so obviously the relationship between the exhaust port and the baffle cone in tune length is also important okay and just the reason i'm making this point is because it so often gets confused with there is one tuned length of exhaust expansion chambers um, and that gets a little bit mixed up in the way the formulas are written for tuned length when as you can pretty well clearly see already is that there is actually two tuned lengths there is one tuned length from the diffuser to the port window to assure this inverted wave arrive at the right time and there is a tuned length between the baffle cone and the port window to ensure the positive reflected sonic wave comes back at the right time okay now we're up to 10 minutes already and the time limit for my videos is about uh, four to five minutes of viewing so we're going to have to finish it at that 
Um, we're going to go into uh, the intricacies of detail of every part of it in ensuing videos, so please stay tuned or subscribe. And uh, that will do it for today. I hope that's been satisfactory enough. If you've got any questions, please hit the comments section. I might be able to answer them briefly. And if not, then we'll do a video on that too, just so that everybody's clear on it. Okay, thanks very much for coming. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.